Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Stay tuned to see how I'm making a real golden website. Ha! <laughs> Woo! Sweating up here. I'm the sun. I'm really hot. What's the weather like down there, Teletubbies? <laughs> It's time for a Teletubby costume evolution. It's time for a Teletubby costume evolution. Dinky Winky. Hanky Winky. Dipsy. La la. La la. Ho. And Dan. Teletubby costumes. Teletubby costumes. Let's evolution some costumes. Yeah. Oh. Thanks, Teletubbies. We did it, guys. <laughs> Teletubbies! The Teletubby costumes are really simple. They haven't really evolved that much. Their costumes are very basic, and every subtle change has been a further refinement of the last costume. Where the real magic lies is in the stories of the controversies that surround the making of these four techno-colorful infants. So while I journey through the history of these wacky costume characters, let me share with you seven of my favorite controversies these Teletubbies had to endure. But first, what is a Teletubby? Well, in the late 1990s, BBC requested new shows for kids featuring visuals of kids with a focus on their relationship with technology. Thus, four techno babies were born. The Teletubbies themselves were inspired by a trip to the Smithsonian Institute, believe it or not. When show creator and writer Andrew Davenport toured the Smithsonian, he noted that the spacemen looked like giant toddlers in diapers. From there, the strange creature design took off. Combining elements of technology with a young infant mindset opened up a new sort of dialogue about how our ever-growing technology affects even the youngest of us. Episodes consisted of the four Teletubbies living in a beautiful Earth house known as the Tubbytronic Superdome. They would venture out into the grassy hills where they would be notified by a spinning windmill, which would satellite beam signals to the Teletubbies' tummies, videos of children around the world doing various activities that the Teletubbies would always watch twice. Like a Furby further along on its evolutionary track, this is some sort of unwieldy interactive meta stuff that literally shaped a generation of weirdos. Possibly you. So who are the Teletubbies? Well, let's meet them. Tinky Winky, the oldest of the Teletubbies, as you can see by his size. And most notably, Tinky Winky has a triangle antenna and a signature red handbag. Lala, oh Lala, with the twirly antenna that it sort of looks like, uh, well, I don't know, a pigtail? I don't really know what we were going with with Lala's head, but you know what? Lala loves ballet and her tutu. Dipsy, there's literally a dipstick on this bro's head. <laughs> Dipsy, one thing Dipsy also loved, hats. My God, you couldn't keep Dipsy away from a hat. And then of course, Poe, the youngest of the Teletubbies, the littlest tubby with uh, essentially a bubble blower wand for an antenna. Uh, Poe is a huge fan of her scooter. So here's a great time to talk about the size of these things. When you're looking at them, you're like, ah, yeah, they're costume characters, but buckle in because Tinky Winky is actually 10 feet tall and Poe, the smallest one is six and a half feet tall. These things are monstrous. Poe is 6'6", six, six. that's how tall I am in four inch platform heels. Imagine it, I can. Here's the thing about the few production photos we have of behind the scenes of the Teletubbies. We get a really good idea of the scale of these things and how the costumes are ultimately put together. There's a large attachable head unit that has articulation that is controlled by a separate puppeteer. There is a large bulky body that was so big, eventually the costume designers had to sew seats into the costumes so that the performers inside could comfortably rest between shots. That's how thick Teletubby hips are. They can store literal stools inside. <laughs> Hashtag Teletubby stools. They had big giant mitts with replaceable grips so that they could always be able to interact with things the way they needed to interact with things. And most importantly, they were heavy. These things weighed up to 60 pounds, and that did not include when they were drenched in sweat or slowly soaking up groundwater. 
So now let's get into it. Let's go over Dan's top seven weird Teletubby controversies. The unadulterated chaos behind the first iteration of Teletubbies. Right off the bat, the Teletubbies had the strangest shooting setup I have ever seen. This was the set, outdoors, fully exposed to the elements. There was no soundstage, and the openness of the show led to paparazzi stalking the production to get shots of the half-dressed actors out of their suits. Ultimately, production had to hire round-the-clock security to keep any photographers from getting remotely close to the giant Teletubby hole. Security was super successful with very, very few photos of headless Teletubbies ever really making it out into the media. Imagine for a second if Sesame Street was literally shot on a street in New York. That, that is the absurdity of what we are looking at here. A giant hole featured a small dome in the center of it that doubled as the soundstage for interior shots. And uh, as you might expect, a large hole dug out in the middle of rural English farmland might act. Uh, it flooded pretty gosh darn regularly. It's so beyond crazy to me that everything was done practically inside the Teletubby hole. That is just mind boggling to me. But you know what? Kudos to the Teletubbies for making this work. Isn't England notoriously rainy? I just, I just think that this is just not a good one-to-one. -one. A rainy countryside and a Teletubby hole. It's just, oh boy, there's gonna be problems. Forget about a Disney community. Give me a Teletubby community. <laughs> Give me... <laughs> Keep it together, Dan. Give me a community of well-irrigated holes filled with colorful... <laughs> community members, and I'll be there, baby. I'll be there. Let's talk about the scale of the set for a moment. Everything had to be huge. Giant trees, giant flowers, giant grassy dome, giant articulated windmill, but most importantly, giant bunnies. These rabbits were trouble for two reasons. You ever hear that phrase, multiply like rabbits? Well, these giant Flemish rabbits used on set had to be repeatedly broken up for ruining shots by attempting to multiply in the background. That's a joke for the parents, kids. But even more tragic was the amount of rabbits we lost on set. <laughs> Due to their giant nature, they had a much shorter lifespan than a regular rabbit. So I guess, thank God, they never stopped multiplying. <laughs> Imagine their weak little hearts when suddenly they're surrounded by this. Look at these Teletubbies terrorizing these bunnies. Oh my God, I'd have a heart attack too. We're going. Pardon? We're going. Away. A lot of concern centered around the speech patterns of a Teletubby. They didn't necessarily speak plain English. Instead, the Teletubbies used a more basic vowel sound, such as like a toddler might use on their journey into speech. Ultimately, child development specialists waved away any legitimate concerns over their speech, and we all stopped caring about the nonsensical character talk as seen in the massively popular aforementioned Minions. Yes, he can on. You don't see child psychologists on Good Morning America having to argue about minions every time a new one comes out. So thankfully we got over this one pretty quick. Let's talk about the most infamous Teletubby controversy. And honestly, but quite possibly my favorite. There's a lot here. There's a lot of confused anger over something as simple as a handbag. One day, I guess a lot of Christians, specifically Jerry Falwell Sr., while eating breakfast before church, realized that the purple Teletubby was a boy. And that didn't sit well with a lot of people when they also realized he was holding a purse. Parents, be very careful what your children are watching. Be sure that uh, subtle and bad images are not being planted in their minds. Tinky Winky is a boy, but Falwell's magazine says the fact he carries a purse suggests he's homosexual. Falwell's journal also points out Tinky Winky's purple and sports an inverted triangle on his head, both symbols of gay pride. The argument, I suppose, is that a male gendered character holding a female gendered item in the presence of a developing mind may lead the child down a path of homosexuality. And that is a lot of pressure to put on a handbag. You know what you don't know about Tinky Winky? He only owns tight pants. 
And you know what? The thing is about tight pants, there's no room in the pockets to carry anything, all right? Tinky Winky needs a handbag. And you know what? It's a popular thing for men to do in Europe, all right? I don't even understand. You know what? If owning a handbag makes you slightly queer, may God strike me down right now. <laughs> Insert a lightning bolt. <laughs> Just have the screen explode. Governments around the world commissioned studies to prove that Tinky Winky was bad for kids. And every one of those studies served up no negative results if they ever even happened and weren't just some giant political stunt to project virtues onto a giant space toddler. Let's talk about when the Teletubbies actually did something scary. Usually episodes of Teletubbies include something called magical events. These are events that happen in the world of the Teletubbies that are designed to entertain the Teletubbies in world, but also then teach a lesson to the viewers at home. One of these magical events is in episode 11, and it is a story about a lion and a bear. And well, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It starts off innocently enough, but it eventually gets super scary when you combine the bizarre the bizarre vocalizations of the bear. I'm the bear with brown fuzzy hair. With the terrified screams of a Teletubby. Ah! <laughs> it slowly becomes this unhinged, entirely unsettling psychological horror piece. I'm so scary on the top, and I'm scary underneath. <laughs> Ultimately, this episode was taken down and the segment was edited and re-recorded to make it less intense. Go watch it for yourself. Turn on all the lights, hug your favorite loved one, and then watch it because it's a ride. Believe it or not, all of that happened during the first run of the Teletubbies, which was only three years. Like a lot of children's shows, once you make three seasons of it, you have enough episodes to syndicate, and now the thing can just go off and live in the ether and entertain kids forever. The original show ends, and the production leaves the farm that they made the Teletubby hole in, and the owner of the farm is then plagued with like close to a decade of crazy tourists wiggling their way into this small English town to like stand on the edge of the Teletubby hole and look at it and then go home to their friends and say, Hey, I went to the Teletubby hole and they were like, what is that? <laughs> so to solve this, she flooded it. She flooded it. She just filled the hole with water and turned it into a round pond. And you know what? People got really upset about that. But you know what? You have to respect the local town. You have to respect the locals when you're invading their space to collect memories from your favorite piece of media. And so ultimately I can't blame her uh, for trying to keep people off her property because it's a, it's a, it's a hole. 14 years after the original series ended, the BBC brought them back in a revival Teletubbies series. Now this Teletubbies revival was interesting. And we updated all of the costumes to make them, ooh, ooh, they're just, it just feels like we took the saturation and just turned it up a little bit. The colors are richer, everything looks more vibrant, but there's a reason for that because everything is fake. No more rainy English Teletubby hole out in the countryside. Now we have replaced it for a giant blue room. Now they built a really beautiful, highly detailed model of the Teletubby hole to lay it into the CGI environments of the show. But otherwise, the only thing really practical in this thing are the tubbies themselves. Look at this thing. It's a 20 to one scale model of Teletubby land. It's gorgeous. Oh my God. Well, it comes to the part of the video where I, I have to raise a que I have to raise this question. Has God abandoned us? Because before now, never once did I think about Teletubbies on a journey of 
becoming parents. There was just never a one-to-one I ever had. Their bellies light up, kids are on them. They want to watch it again, which I'm, I am never here for because of my terrible ADD. But you know, fine Teletubbies, let's watch the kids again. Ever once did I assume the Teletubbies were ever looking to have kids? Well, all that changed. All of that changed in the revival series because now that we're all CGI, that means the Teletubbies live in a CGI environment. So why not just start rolling in some CGI characters? May I introduce to you the offspring of the Teletubby, the Tiddly Tubby. Oh, uh, some of the names, Kenny, I'm gonna tell you all of the names cause they are all precious. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, the tiddly tubbies. All right, let's buckle up. First, we've got Umbly Pumbly, followed by Ba, then Ping, then there's Dada, Nin, Mimi, Roo, and Duggle D. Each of the Teletubbies reproduced twice, statistically. I don't know, maybe Tinky Winky did most of the work and had all eight of them, I'm not sure. The Teletubby tiddly tubby numbers quadrupled. The, the Tiddly Tubbies have their own series, you know, and it's an entirely CGI'd show. Uh, uh, one of the stranger things about the Tiddly Tubbies, though, is like how uh, narcoleptic they are. Like, often, I don't know if it's just not in the CGI budget to animate all eight of these guys whenever there's an episode, but often there's like one to three Tiddly Tubbies getting up to shenanigans while the rest of them are in like cryogenic sleep around the Tiddly Tubby corner of the dome. It's hilarious to watch. Uh, I, 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 oh, Tiddly Tubbies. Oh. Now, of course, the Teletubbies are a sensation, right? So obviously they're going to make some live appearances in some theme parks and touring shows. And in fact, they've done just that, Teletubbies live. Here's where the costumes get really off the rails, all right? Looking at them, they're almost like just premium versions of a Party City Teletubby costume. There is not a lot of like, finesse here. I feel like I'm meeting uh, a theme park mascot made by a company that's cutting budgets. Now, don't get me wrong. They're beautiful for what they are. They have to have a lot of durability. These things are traveling all over the place, getting beat up by kids and random performers. They have to be versatile, but you sacrifice a lot by making these costumes versatile. Most notably, the height difference. Suddenly, all God's Teletubbies are the same height. And that mm, canonically doesn't hold up for me. How are the other three Teletubbies supposed to listen to Tinky Winky if they're the same size as him? I don't know much about Teletubby lore and culture, but I imagine the largest Teletubby has the most dominance. We've seen that so far in their behavior. <laughs> so when you make Tinky Winky tiny, Tinky Winky loses Tinky Winky's voice. We've got a lot of really fun stuff happening in that show. You've got that robot vacuum R2-D2 thing. You've got incredible puppet sheep and rabbit. They made giant Flemish rabbit puppets, which I think is amazing. So, so incredibly clever. I think they succeeded in making the Teletubbies live costumes work. They are very recognizable. They're iconic. They have all the silhouettes. And these are just things you can't control. You can't put a performer regularly inside of a gigantic Tinky Winky costume and have them perform live consistently. The endurance of a human being is just not there. These things were incredibly murderous to be inside. And so having scaled down versions for a live tour honestly makes the most sense. While editing this video, we were looking for more footage of these live Teletubbies and we stumbled upon these even stranger Teletubbies with these huge faces. They're all so bulbous and everything just looks so tight and uncomfortable. Hey, you know when your mom said to only wash your colorful clothes with cold water? This is why. When you don't, this is what they turn into. <laughs> these costumes look like the first costumes they might have possibly made. And then they're like, all right, get these as far away from England as possible. We can't even date where these strange fluffy tubbies came from. They're just so weird. They're like marshmallow Teletubby faces. Why, why are their eyes so big and so terrifying? <laughs> I honestly can't tell which of these live Teletubby versions are better, uh, but they're both suspect and I wouldn't trust either of them to watch my kids. This of course brings me to my last Teletubby controversy. 
And I don't really want to touch this with a 10 foot Teletubby pole, but uh, when the COVID vaccine first rolled out, there was this popular trend of showing everyone your COVID vaccine card. And um, for whatever reason, uh, the production company behind the Teletubbies is like, yeah, let's normalize vaccines for kids before they even existed. And they did that by posting the Teletubbies all proudly showing their vaccine cards uh, but they were really weird uh, and um, their date of births didn't really make a lot of sense because they're infants, but they're not infants. And now I have a lot of questions about how a Teletubby ages. And um, I don't know what Noon's Noon is. I don't know what vaccines these Teletubbies got, but <laughs> apparently in whatever bizarre alternate universe that the Teletubbies exist, COVID has found its way to be transmittable through radio signals? Because that's the only connection the Teletubbies have with us humans. They observe us from their pocket dimension through their tummies as beckoned by the God baby son. All right, so like, how did they get COVID or why are they even at risk in the first place? These are questions that you know what, I'm not paid enough to ask or answer. People got mad at this for like no reason. They're just like, hey, seems like a great morning to get mad at something. And, and then they saw the Teletubbies and they're just like, Teletubbies? Oh, I thought we got rid of you 12 years ago. What's so amazing about this is that of all the controversial things that you think the audience might have gotten upset about the Teletubbies getting vaccinated, we were most concerned about their ages and the fact that they didn't get the Teletubbies ages right on the vaccine cards. Uh, welcome. Welcome to whatever all this is. Once again, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. Manage your members, send email notifications and leverage audience insights all on one easy to use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. Extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These new third-party tools help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales, tax and ship items across the globe. Display posts from your social profiles on your website. Automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Disney Dan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks to Squarespace sponsoring this video. It's finally opened up the doors for me to experiment with my favorite idea for a theme park website. A golden opportunity, if you will, a, <laughs> a repository of reviews of every theme park bathroom in what I would like to call Diz P. That's right. We're about to categorize, inventorize, reviewerize, and smellerize every theme park bathroom at a Disney park. Everyone has a favorite theme park bathroom. I, I know you do. I know you do. I know I, I do. And I'm not gonna tell you what my favorite theme park, I, I don't need people knowing yet. Thanks for taking the journey through all those Teletubby controversies. Let me know in the comments below, which of the bizarre tubby controversies do you remember unfolding before your eyes in the media? I remember because it all was happening when I was like 10. So it's all real fresh in my mind. All the strange and absurd things we were shouting about colorful space toddler babies. Oh well, anyway, Teletubbies, there you go. What are you gonna do? Thanks for watching. Appreciate every single one of your likes, comments, bell rings, and subscribes. Really, you guys are all super incredible. Come find me over on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and don't forget my Patreon where you can join the Laugh Pack. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, you rock.